flames terrorized the DFW area for three years. No one knew who this guy was. Hi, hello, welcome to The Jet Show. By the title, you should already know that it's True Crime Thursday, True Crime Thursday. In today's True Crime Thursday video, I'm gonna tell you about the bathtub killer. Get ready, babies. You're in for a ride. Think back to 1996. Were you even born? What were you doing in 1996? How old were you? Well, in 1996, Pokemon was introduced to the world. Bill Clinton was re-elected president. In 1996, in Arlington, Texas, third grade teacher, 25-year-old Christine Vu, was found face down in a bathtub with her hands, neck, and ankles tied with duct tape. Her fiance found her. He couldn't get a hold of her, so he tried to enter her apartment three times. By the time he was able to get in successfully, he found his girlfriend murdered. When the police get there, they discover that she had been raped strangled and murdered and that she had been drowned that murder took place so the police were stumbled they collected fingerprints from the crime scene so fast forward to christmas eve the same year in 1996 wendy prescott didn't show up for a shopping trip with her uncle and auntie they hadn't heard from her all day so around 11 p.m they went to her apartment to check to see what was going on and if she was okay. Now think back, this is 1996, so they really didn't, ha they didn't have cell phones back then. When they found her, they found her naked in a bathtub, they found her face down naked in a bathtub. Her neck, wrist, and ankles had been tied with duct tape. Coincidentally and sadly, both of these murders happened in the same apartment complex. Of course, police, they collect fingerprints. Because of the brutal nature of the crimes, police thought that maybe this um, person had committed crimes before, and they came up empty-handed because this was before DNA testing was a thing. And also, a lot of uh, potential suspects that lived in the apartment complex, they ended up moving out. I think I would have moved out too. I think I would have been a little too creeped out and the fact they hadn't found the guy that did it yeah i would have moved out too no doubt both of these crimes had taken place in arlington texas i live near arlington texas so that's why this story was that's why this story was a little close to home to me literally because even though this was back in 96 like i live near arlington so moving ahead to 1999, Chima Benson was asleep in her AKA sorority house. She woke up with a man on top of her. He forced her to perform oral sex on him and she bit him, which just angered him more. So he proceeds to beat her and rape her, leaving her incapacitated on the bedroom floor. Police had by this time put out in the news that there was a bathtub killer on the loose named him the bathtub killer because his first two murders, two ladies were found in the bathtub, as I mentioned earlier. It seems as if the bathtub killer's crimes were de-escalating. He went from serial killer to just a serial rapist. Not that that's any better, but it seemed like his crimes were going down. You think maybe he had a guilty conscience and said, huh, I don't think I'll kill anymore, I'll just rape sicko. Fast forward to the same year, 1999, Adrian Fields, she was watching the news about the bathtub killer because by that time it was all over the news. Adrian Fields lived in the neighboring city of Grand Prairie. So if you don't know anything about Arlington and Grand Prairie, they are right next to each other, literally. Like, they're the next cities. If you drive across one street, you'll be in Grand Prairie. If you drive up another, you'll be in Arlington. 
that's how close they are. When Adrienne was watching the news, she had a she had a bad feeling come over her. She just felt like she was going to be next. She had this strange gut feeling that that said, "I think I'm going to be next." So she was very very paranoid. She was telling all of her family and friends, look, I think I'm going to be the next victim. So Adrian Fields moved in Grand Prairie. She moved to another apartment. She told her family and friends, quote, I'm going to move because he's going to get me, end quote. And she also said, quote, I just have this crazy feeling that he's going to get me, end quote. So when Adrian when Adrian moved, she thought that you know her nerves would calm down and then that everything would just blow over, everything would be okay. Well, her worst nightmare came to life on October 26, 1999, at 3 a.m. She heard a noise like someone was was walking through her apartment. She heard a swish 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 noise and as she t she turned over slowly and as she was turning over a guy with a stocking cap was running towards her so he gets on the bed he jumps on her and he covers her mouth and he puts a gun in her back and he said quote do you feel that adrian responds yes and he says quote if you keep screaming i'm going to hurt you end quote well apparently he knew her, but she didn't know him. She was thinking to herself, how, oh my gosh, how does he know her? The bathtub killer admitted to Adrian Fields that he had been stalking her. Adrian asks him, why are you doing this? And he replies, quote, the devil keeps making me do it, end quote. What a piece of shit, excuse my language. No, actually don't excuse it, he's a piece of shit in the story. He was getting ready to leave after he assaulted her and she tells him, quote, you've done this before, haven't you? I don't even know what I would do in that situation. It's easy to say what you would do if you were in someone else's shoes. And after she says that, after she says you've done this before, he pushes her down. And then Adriana begins to pray to herself. She asks God to forgive her of all of her sins and asks God, if I have to die tonight, please let me go to heaven. Wow. She said, I don't want to die tonight. She said, I just want to go to heaven. Don't, please don't let my life end. Remarkably, the bathtub killer left her apartment and never looked back. Adriana Fields doesn't know what made him change his mind, but she's obviously thankful that he let her live. So prayer does work. And also Adrian Fields, when she was feeling uncomfortable, her sister would stay the night with her. So happened on this night, October 26, 1999, she told her sister, no, don't stay with me tonight. I'm gonna be a big girl and I'm gonna stay here by myself. Wow, I can't imagine. Cause her sister naturally felt guilty, even though it's not her fault. But her sister felt like she should have been there. And Fields naturally was uncomfortable. She always feared that he would come back and finish what he started. Finally, in September, the year 2000, it called Adrian Fields in to let her know that they think they call, have caught the Baptist hub killer due to advances in DNA testing. If you remember back earlier in the story when I told you about Chima Benson when she bit the bathtub killer in his genitals, well, they were able to get the DNA matched the killer to the crimes. His name was Dale Devon Chanette. He was a bouncer at a local club, and most of his victims had frequented that club. When he was a bouncer, he would ask for their IDs, and he would memorize their addresses or write them down. Because Adrian Fields did remember one time when she was out at that club where he was a bouncer, she obviously didn't know he was the bathtub killer at the time, but she felt like he was there. She said, 
She said, I feel like the guy that raped me is here. And he was. He was the bouncer. They connected him to the rape on four women, but he was only charged for the murder of Christine Vu. He was um, charged with her murder in 2003. He tried to appeal it, but it was overturned. And he was set for execution. And he was executed on Adrian Field's birthday, February 10th, 2009. They asked him if he had a final statement and he says, quote, My only statement is that no cases are ever tried error free. Those are my words. No cases are ever tried error free. End quote. Sicko. He's a straight sicko. The slayings terrorized the DFW area for three years. No one knew who this guy was. People were on edge. People were watching their backs. I can't imagine living around that time in that city, even though I live near it now. But back then, I don't know how anyone could have peace of mind like that, because you never know who was gonna be next. That is the story of the bathtub killer. Let me know what you guys think of this story. It's it's really sad. Um, I really, I really wish that murderers and rapists would actually be tortured to death instead of just lethal injection, just quick and easy, and they're done. While their victims, if they weren't, if they didn't kill their victims, their victims are still suffering mentally. Like Adrian Fields, the poor lady, she suffered with low self-esteem. She, um, her and her husband divorced because they, she couldn't handle all of the emotions and all the pain that came with this trauma. So I really wish they would give more help to victims like that. But also the scary part as well is this guy was a bouncer at a club. I know most clubs are closed right now due to COVID and quarantine, but the fact that this guy wrote down addresses and memorized addresses is absolutely crazy. Like, what do you do now? Like, I mean, I know you can't be live in fear, but also, but what if, you know, somebody memorizes your address and then something crazy like this happens? I guess that's why everybody should carry. That's the only thing I can say and just stay prayed up. Let me know what you guys think of this story and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. And I'll see you on Thursday for another True Crown Thursday story.